Today, in the epistle, we read about Joseph in the book of Genesis. We're told about his dreams, which foretold his power and authority he would receive in Egypt. And we also see the jealousy and the hatred of his brothers in response to this. Shall we adore you? Shall you lord it over us? For he was the youngest brother. Their jealousy and their hatred in their heart, which they fostered, led to their desire to kill him. Joseph's father, Jacob, Israel, sends his son Joseph to check on his brothers who are tending the flocks to see if all was well. When his brothers see Joseph coming over the hill, they mockingly say, oh, the dreamer is coming and resurrect in their hearts that enmity, jealousy, and hatred they had for their brother. We know what happens next. They don't kill him, but rather they throw him into an old well. And leaving him there to die, they find a better solution. A band of traders are going down the road to Egypt. Hey, let's make a buck off our brother. Even better, it's much cleaner and far more profitable. So they sell him for the price of a slave to Egypt. We know what happens to Joseph next. He rises through the ranks, interprets the Pharaoh's dream. He's placed second in command to the Pharaoh, the Lord of the house, who has all the authority of Pharaoh besides the throne. And he prepares Egypt for the seven years of famine by the seven years of plenty, gather him into the barn. Joseph is presented to us in the this time of Lent, in this time of Lent, because he is a type of our Lord in his passion, death, and resurrection. Our Lord was also betrayed and killed by his own brethren, the chosen people. They were rejected. They rejected him as they rejected the prophets who came before him. He was sold the price of a slave, crucified, and placed in the earth in a tomb. He rose again to feed us with his own flesh and blood to help us on our way to heaven, to feed us on our way to heaven, to save us from the famine which is caused by sin. Joseph then is a good example, another type, as I mentioned, of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. And we'll continue in the epistles of this holy season of Lent to see the different types in the Old Testament, in the prophets, of our Lord's saving action of his passion, death, and resurrection. And so let's pay attention to those things. And also how they are paired with the gospel, For in today's gospel, our Lord gives the parable of the vineyard that's hired out to farmers to tend and to bring forth fruit in its appropriate season. And he sends different people to check on the laborers to see how things are going. Some they beat up, others they killed. Finally, the Lord of the vineyard 
decides to send his own son, for truly they will respect my son. But rather than respecting the son of the vineyard owner, they do the same. Let us kill him, because then we'll get his inheritance. The Pharisees understood our Lord was talking to them about the vineyard of their souls. Because he asked them a question, what should be done to these laborers? He said they should perish in a miserable death and the vineyard should be given to others to tend. And that's exactly what happened. The Gentiles will bring forth the fruit that our Lord looked for at the end of time the Jews as well will convert. We are also represented in that parable. Remember the church placed before us just before Lent, that parable of the sower of the seed. Our soul is represented by those different soil types, the rocks, the thorns, the path. Our Lord is coming to us in this holy season, seeking the fruit of his grace. Let's not treat our Lord like the vine dressers in today's gospel. Let us bring forth that fruit and give it to him. Let us not reject the graces God gives us during this holy season to tend to the soil of our soul to bring forth good fruit of virtue, holiness, and truth. For the whole church is praying for all of us every single day, extra prayers and penances offered, especially by the religious communities and their ancient traditions and fasts and penances. All of those graces are being poured out on the church generously during this time of Lent. So let us open our souls to them and we with Christ will rise gloriously to new heights of holiness come Easter Sunday. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.